into it. Okay. Um, so I'll start with uh, where this idea come from. So I was working on a weight loss project called Direct. Um, some of you probably already heard of it. Because the intervention is super effective, so we want to use a model to look at long-term outcomes. And the Scottish uh, CVD model was one of the many options that we were looking at. Um, and it was developed here in Kaita in Glasgow, so the model is available in-house. So I obtained the model from my colleague, and then after one hour looking across the sheets, I just found the model is much more complex than I thought. Um, so I went to my colleague Robert, who had used the model for his projects before. Then we sat down together looking at the model, and then after 30 minutes, we just both got quite confused. The Excel model contains two files for men and women, and each of them contains over 60 sheets. And here's a screen video of the model. So juggling between the sheets to find the cell link and understanding the formula just takes so much time. Um, besides, um, because the model has been adapted a few times by several different hands, in some places the layout is not very clear. And plus, sometimes um, Excel was not very happy. So after half an hour, Robert said, this is why we should use alpha models. So he said that because um, that was just after we attended this R4HD workshop last year at UCL. And here is some evidence. We did not get a group photo at the event, but had a photo uh, on Virgin Train come back from, from London. Well, at that time, it was still called Virgin Train. Anyway, um, this exercise was inspired by this workshop. Then I took this idea to my colleague Yun Gray, who had previous experience with modeling R, and Jim, who was one of the developers of the CVD model, and then came up with this more concrete idea, um, which is to convert the CVD model from Excel to R. So there's this with it. So first of all, it will improve our understanding of the CVD model, as quite a few people in our team may need to adapt it at some point in the future for their project. So this is a good candidate to convert into R, as it will make future adaptation much easier. Also, it can improve our skills of modeling R as we already have the Excel version developed so that we can always compare the results when we develop each line of coding R with the Excel to make sure our R coding is correct. And then also lastly, uh, Robert has mentioned a few times that running the simulation in Excel just takes a very long time. We've heard many times that in R, there are many solutions to make it run faster. So we think once the model is converted, will be an efficient alternative when people use it to run large amount of simulations. So our initial idea was to have more coders join the team and each person in charge of one part of the model. So um, it will not take too much time for each of us as we were all doing this on the side of our main project. So two of my other colleagues joined the team, um, Hora and Jose, so four health economists in total. Here you can see that our experience in R and with R and modeling with R up to the start of the project was varied, which is a good thing so that we can learn from each other. And we also got a wide support from uh, our other colleagues. And of course they have other roles, but in this project, they are CVD model developers. So Jim, Kenny and Andy and the model adapters Kieran Roberts and uh, our expert for this project, David McMaster. So although our original idea was each person called one part, but because we had different previous experience with R and our coding approach might be different. So Andy suggested us to code independently first and come together to compare our coding. So in this way, people can contrast their approach and styles of coding. Um, plus, model replication is super important, not just between different software, but also between different people. So in such a way, we can replicate the um, model to reduce random errors. So this is how this idea was finally shaped. Um, so before I talk about the process and the code, I'll just briefly talk about the CVD model first. So it is a competing risk model. People start from the CVD event-free state then they can go to one of the four uh, first events, so two non-fatal events, 
One is coronary heart disease, the other one is cerebral vascular disease. So one heart problem, one uh, brain problem. One, and then uh, but people can die from the first uh, event. So um, can die from CVD cause or um, non-CVD cause. Uh, so for those who survive the first event, they will live until they die from all cause. So like the other models, uh, these equations are for the three parts of the calculation, predicting the probability of events and the survival and predicting cost and quality. And here is an animation. Uh, okay, the animation of the model made by a previous colleague, Matt Nielsen, where you can see the flow of the patients uh, in the model. So here is a process of a view. So four of us coded independently. We modul uh, modularized the coding to two tasks. The first ta task is to obtain the life expectancy. So before the coding, Jim, who was one of the CVD model developer, um, explained how the model was implemented in Excel. And then we coded independently to get life expectancy. And then we met up and compared our coding. Then we found two coders coded from scratch, so not using any health economics packages. And the other two coders explored using packages, including HEMODE. Then the two styles became two teams. So for task two, to get cost and quality, they, the two teams, each of the team worked together and two final versions of the code were produced. So again, one um, code from scratch, not using any specific packages, and the other one using he mode. Then the version one has been finished. Um, so uh, it was then compared with Excel on the running speed and also on the outcomes across different patient profiles and uh, time horizons. So um, I just want to mention a little bit about the debugging aspect in this process. So at the beginning, the Excel model was used as um, a reference to cross-check values when we wrote each line of the R code. But later on, we identified some errors in the Excel model. So while waiting for the errors to be corrected, we continued the R coding, but without the cross-checking. So that's why in the end, we compared the completed R coding and the Excel in terms of the outcome. So although the outcomes do not very do not very much, as you can see from the screen, but they should give exactly the same results as the calculation process are exactly the same. Otherwise, we can't say we successfully replicate the Excel model. And also, although we are pretty sure the Excel model contain errors, we're not 100% sure that our code is definitely error free. So we did further debugging, get errors corrected, and for the comparison, and finally, the two models agreed with each other. So that means they produce the exact same uh, numbers for life years, qualities, and costs on every level. So although these debugging processes iterative, um, uh, but it is indeed very exciting at the end when we see the exact number from the two models, which verifies both version of the model. So um, yeah, our excitement were exactly like the minions. Um, anyway, so in the end, we, the correct R version, we developed the shiny app of the Scottish CVD model. So I think I'll show you the shiny app first so that you can get a flavor of uh, what this model is. So the code for the model and the app are in the repository, so you can download it and try yourself. So here is the app, um, title, and some description. Uh, sorry, I think you need to switch to sharing that new window that you just opened. Oh, otherwise sorry. you still see the uh, PowerPoint. Okay. <laughs> sorry. So, thank you for reminding sure. me. Sure. Um, oh, oh, is this still the same thing? Yes. So stop sharing. So let me just share again this one. Can you see my browser now? Yes, yes, perfect. perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this, this is the model interface. Um, and so title and some description, some references. And then on the sidebar, you can enter patient characteristics, including age, sex, deprivation, diabetes, family history, et cetera. 
and then some uh, treatment information. So we coded this to look at statin uh, treatment effect, but you can easily adapt the code to look at other treatments. And in the end, you can choose your discount rate and time horizon. And on the main panel, model intro, and click the uh, base case results tab, then the calculation will start. Then um, you can see the outcomes here. So outcome without intervention, with intervention, and incremental outcomes at the bottom. Um, then if you change the parameters on the side, uh, you can see the results uh, are updated. Then on the final tab is the PSA. So here you can enter um, the number of iterations. I think I would just enter 50 um, to save some time. Um, and the click the button and the uh, simulation will start run. Then we added the progress bar so that you can follow the progress. Um, then rendering plot is a little bit slow because I used the pack, this package called Plotly which is basically to produce an interactive ggplot. Although it's a, bit, a little bit slow, um, but uh, once it's rendered, well, let's just uh, wait a little bit long. Oh, here we go. So although it's a little bit slow, but um, once you see the results, uh, you can see that when you hover over the points, the corresponding value will show. So that's a good benefit um, of using the package plotly. Um, you could also set up a download button here, which allows um, users to download all the simulated data, uh, which might be a use of useful function. Um, so that's all I want to say about the app. Um, now I'll show you the code. I don't know if I need to stop. Can you show the code now or I need to stop sharing again? I think you are only sharing one window at a time. So yeah. if you want to go to something else, you need to stop sharing that and share whatever it is you want to share. Okay. <clears throat> so thanks, Shang. Of course. <clears throat> so um, here is the code. Um, so um, patient characteristics are set up at the beginning. Uh, as well as the uh, treatment uh, uh, information as you saw from the app. And then the coefficients are loaded from a separate file because there are quite a lot of them. Otherwise, they take a lot of space in this model file and um, scrolling up and down to find the object can get quite annoying. Um, then the model is written as a function as it will facilitate the sensitivity analysis and PSA and also model as a function is also preferred in the Shiny app. Um, so the model uh, function contains the calculation to get uh, life expectancy. So uh, doing the calculations for predicting the probabilities and the survival. Um, and then if you're going down, um, the model function also contains getting the cost and the qualities. Um, and uh, that's for the function and in the end is the PSA where you uh, loop the model function over the draws. So I'm just conscious of time, so I'm not going to run it line by line, um, but I just want to mention um, a few points. So the first thing is the R script is essentially a collection of all the formulas that you input in the Excel cells. Um, so what I mean here um, is that when you open an Excel model, what you immediately see are the results of the calculation. You need to click each cell to see the calculations. Whereas in R, what's in front of you are the calculations themselves. So um, it is easier to see the relationship between different objects. And then because it is script-based, it automatically provides you the flow in terms of how the model is developed. As I remember always the first question when I asked my colleague when I got a new model, uh, in Excel model file is that which sheet should I look first and which sheet should I look next? So with R code, I don't need to ask that question anymore. I just look at it from the first line. So this also makes it much easier for model adaptation. So anybody who wants to adapt the model can run the code line by line to get to understand how the model was developed step by step. So I think this is a big advantage over Excel where 
the order of development is not as clear and trying to understand the process and model development step by step is just very time consuming. And um, the last thing I want to mention is to improve efficiency. We tried to use um, vectorized calculation where we could, um, as far as, as we could work out. But sometimes there is role dependency, like the transition probability calculation. So we couldn't think a way to do without a loop. So we used loop as well. Um, but apparently from the last presentation, we could try the C++ solution um, if we can figure out. Um, all right, so that's everything I want to mention about the code. Um, please feel free to try yourself. Uh, we've, we've put in clear annotations, so hopefully the code itself is uh, self-explanatory. So let me just go back to the presentation. Um, so show screen. So after the model was uh, developed, we tested the speed for running 1000 simulations. So the R code, as you can see, runs more than twice as faster uh, than the Excel code. Um, at the moment, the R code is written in a way to improve the uh, readability. But if the speed is of interest, surely they can be made more efficient. Um, and also, as others have mentioned in this workshop, that uh, we can use parallel computing. So use uh, multi cores of computer to further improve the speed. And the time here only shows running it with a single core. Okay, uh, to summarize, the R version of the CVD model runs much faster uh, and the script-based code have much better readability and adaptability compared to the Excel uh, model. And also, although errors are pretty much unavoidable regardless of software, but because we need to, uh, because we don't need to juggling between different sheets and clicking cells everywhere, it has less chance of typo and uh, referencing errors compared to Excel. Um, and since the other coders in the team looked at options of using packages, so we also have some reflections on this. Um, so similar to Excel, and uh, one reason that people like Excel over the other softwares like Triage is that Excel allows you the full control of the model, as you can easily check and amend every cell, every calculation. So this is similar to coding from scratch in R, where you have the full control of your model. But this is not to say not using packages. We do think packages are becoming powerful and hassle-free for standard models. And, and sometimes packages provide uh, pretty powerful porting functions, which can be quite useful than, um, than spending time yourself. And so it kind of depending on your own uh, model situation. And then next is the concept of one-stop modeling. And so in the CVD example, when the model was developed many years ago, the coefficients for the functions were estimated in Stata from IPB and then uh, modeling Excel and uh, as well as the data visualization. But uh, with R, it has strong statistical programming ability, which means you can do all the jobs, the IPD analysis, modeling, and data visualization with Shiny or Markdown. So it is very powerful. Um, yeah, and, and then those are my final points. And so besides developing the R version of the model, this is a great opportunity to review previous models especially if these models are still being used and um, maybe used in the future. Um, errors are almost um, unavoidable, um, but model replication between the two software kind of verifies both models. So depending on the complexity of the model, the debugging process can be quite painful, but um, when a bug is, is fixed, it will bring a lot of sense of achievement. Um, so, yeah, um, so finally, I just want to say that through this conversion exercise, our skills of modeling with R have greatly improved. So I hope this would be inspiring to others who are used to modeling in Excel, but reluctant to try modeling R. You can start by converting the Excel models to R, and I'm sure you will gain a lot in this process, and it will help make a smooth transition from Excel to R. So yeah, um, have a shot and um, thank you very much.
Thank you very much. That was very, very interesting. And uh, you will be surprised to hear that I agree with entirely everything that you just said. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so I've got a couple of questions from the chat. So the first one says, very interesting project. Can you maybe say a bit about